In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use one of the newest parts of the Microsoft BI product line, which is called PowerMap. PowerMap was formerly known under the codename GeoFlow during the development cycle. This will become part of the Power BI suite that will become available sometime in the near future after this recording was made. But you can download this component now and start to work with it and deliver some insight from it. So once you download PowerMap, and I've already done that so I don't need to, but you can download it from this link which you see up here in the browser bar. Once you've downloaded it, you simply install it with the MSI installer and it will include itself within Excel. Before running PowerMap, you need to create some kind of a PowerPivot workbook. And if you are not familiar with PowerPivot or haven't used that before, that's another BI add-in to the Excel product. And if you'd like to learn more about PowerPivot and how that's used, there are a lot of lessons here on MSBI Academy that you can browse for that. I'll put the link in the notes below that you can go to to see all the PowerPivot related videos. But if you do have the data model already built, as I do, then using PowerMap is pretty simple. So the data model that I have is the PowerPivot workbook that has some information that has rainfall prediction just before Hurricane Sandy came ashore in the United States on the East Coast. So let's take a look at this data model. It has what you'd expect, some lookup tables like age groups and county codes and state codes and so on. We have predicted rainfall by county in various states in the United States, especially those that are at least close enough to the hurricane to be affected by it. We have another sheet that gives us the breakdown of population of 70 and over residents in each of those counties. So if we could compare the two of those and really see where the storm's going to hit the hardest, drop the most rain, we can understand where we need to do things like pre-positioning supplies and so on in order to be ready to help the most at-risk populations. So with that, let's go ahead and build our power map. I'm going to go back to Excel. And the command to create the map is actually on the Insert tab. And the command I'm going to use is Launch GeoFlow. I expect the labeling will change as the product itself adopts the, the new name that marketing has assigned. But for now, I'll click GeoFlow. That'll launch the Power Map add-in. And what this brings up is an initial view from Bing Maps of the entire world. And you can see in my kind of pivot table window over here, I can see the data that is coming from my Power Pivot workbook. The way that Power Map is organized is into various layers. So it starts with a layer called Layer 1. There's no data selected. I'm going to give this layer a name right off the bat. I'm going to call this uh, Population density. And then within the property window, I'm going to set it up. I need to give it some geography to try to map data to. In my case, I have the county name, I have the state name. Those aren't really geospatial locations. Those are just political names that are assigned to geospatial locations. So PowerMap has the ability to take this information that isn't that specific as far as latitude and longitude and call into the Bing map services to geolocate those counties and states exactly where they should be on the map. So when I click the map it button here on the lower right, on the lower left, you'll see it's actually processing 3000 counties to geolocate them on the map. And this will take a couple minutes. I'll speed the video so you don't have to wait. When the geolocation step finishes, what we get is this view of the United States because that's where my source data is coming from and kind of a dot in every county. It's not telling us really anything at this point. So we need to take some data and put it into the layer so that it can give us something interesting to see. And this first layer is going to be population density. So I'll just choose total population for the population of uh, folks that are over 70 years old. And by default, that will try to graph everything with a, uh, a column chart. So if I zoom in, I can see a lot of columns. And that's not really that interesting. So what I'm going to do is change this from a column chart to a heat map. And that shows us something a little bit more interesting, but it's actually still not that easy to see. So I can manipulate the heat map a little bit. Maybe increase the color scale and the radius a little. So I can see my megalopolis here along the East Coast, as well as Southern California, a little bit in San Francisco area, Chicago. And I can start to make out where the population is within the country. Of course, the area that we're going to be most concerned with is along the Atlantic coast here. That's where the storm is coming ashore. And to really make this more interesting now, let's add another layer. 
So the second layer, again, gets named layer two. Actually, for me, it's going to be alertly population is what I'll, I'll call this. And within this layer, again, I'm going to use the county name and the state name to align to the map. In this layer, I really want to see the breakdown of elderly population uh, by county. So uh, now that I can see that I'm locating on the counties, I'll just go down to the demographics over 70 and again choose total population. That will give me kind of bar charts now over the individual counties. But I have more information I can break down because I have this age group dimension as well. So I'm going to take the age group and make that a category. And that will give me bars that show by county the breakdown of different age populations. So it gives me a little bit more information. And then if I zoom in a little bit, I can see that looks pretty good. My density, I've kind of lost that that same scale that I had before, so I'm going to increase that a little bit. So as I'm looking at this part of the coast, it's really obvious where the high population densities are. And then for the elderly population, I'll do the same thing, just make it maybe a little bit thinner, maybe a little bit higher so I can see the differences between the relative populations. And that gives me a little bit more information. I can really see now what's going on in the different counties and, and where these populations are. And if, if this is all the information I had, I suppose I could make some pretty good decisions about where to focus my preparation efforts. But we're going to improve this a little bit more by adding that layer for rainfall. And this is automatically named layer three. I'm going to call this rainfall instead. And then the same process to go through and find the fact table that uh, I want to use. And I have the county and the state. And again, you can see from this table, these are being geolocated using the Bing Map service. And once that's done, I can then choose the data that I actually want to put onto the map. So I'll choose this HR6 field. And then if I make that column a bit thicker, and maybe a bit shorter, right about there. Now as I look at the map, it starts to tell me a story and really flag where I need to focus my efforts. 